Welcome to another objective in your biochemistry objectives. This one asks you to differentiate among monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Always helps to uh, pay attention, obviously, to the verb in these objectives. To differentiate, it's actually asking you, uh, can you tell the difference between these monosaccharides, the disaccharides, and polysaccharides? What that eventually becomes, of course, is probably on a test on the written section, I show you pictures of certain monosaccharides, polysaccharides, disaccharides, and then you basically have to wax eloquent as to what they are, etc., etc. So, um, mono, I think at some point or other in your long-legged life, you have come across that prefix simply means one, a monocycle, whereas di or bi would have meant two. So in this case, we're talking about one saccharide, two saccharides, and poly or mini saccharides. Of course, that begs the question, what the heck is saccharide? Saccharide comes from the root saccharum, which means sugar. And we're talking in particular here about monosaccharides. So these are single sugar units. And for our purposes in by 12, there's really just two types of monosaccharides. There's the pentose sugars, and penta means five. So we're talking about five carbon sugars. And five carbon sugars would be ribose. Ever heard of ribonucleic acid or RNA? And there's another one, deoxyribose. This would be the sugar in DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. So both of those are monosaccharides. Both of them are pentose sugars. The other monosaccharides are hexose sugars. Hexa means six. So now we're talking about six carbon sugars. These lovely little models, these hexagons, hexagons are simply figures that where the vertices are would be where the carbons are. So you can see in this case, there's gonna be six carbons. That's why they're hexoses. The hexose sugar, the monosaccharide, you really need to get to know is glucose. C6H12O6, sometimes called dextrose, sometimes called grape sugar, blood sugar. This is the sugar that's cursing around in your veins, supplying you with energy for uh, cellular respiration and a whole lot of other things. The other hexose sugar, fructose, sometimes known as fruit sugar, because this is the sugar present in ripening fruit. There are others like galactose, but those are the two main ones, glucose and fructose. So there you go again, uh, monosaccharides, two types, pentoses and hexoses. The most important hexose is glucose. Glucose is certainly the uh, monosaccharide that you need to become familiar with, but you have to realize that glucose is in fact a 3D molecule. And so there are a whole lot of different ways that you can represent that. So you do need to some degree to become familiar with those possibilities. The molecular formula of uh, glucose is, has been, and always will be, C6H12O6. You might want to repeat that to yourself about 12 times before going to bed tonight. Um, yeah. So that's the molecular formula. Again, that's not to be confused with the empirical formula, which is the C1H2O1, simply the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. But that formula, when you build it into some sort of a structural representation, there's a whole lot of possibilities as to how you could do that. You could actually make C6H12O6 into a straight chain like this. You could take the ends of the carbons on the straight chain chains and have them circle back and form a ring. So this is the ring structure for glucose. This is the one you probably should be most familiar with. That's the one you will recognize. And then if you're really artistic, of course, you could actually try to represent the correct bond angles and give a 3D rendition of it by actually showing the black carbons connected to the oxygens connected to the hydrogens. Um, feel comfortable in the fact that no one is actually going to expect you to draw any of these. Uh, the only biological molecules you would ever have to draw would be a representation of water showing its polar structure or an amino acid. So this is all about recognition rather than actually drawing. So, so relax on that front.
Moving on from monosaccharides to disaccharides, we've already determined that di, of course, means two. We're talking about two sugar units. So a disaccharide is two monosaccharide units, think glucose, joined by a process called dehydration synthesis. You may not be familiar with the term dehydration synthesis yet. It comes under a lot of different names, but uh, eventually you'll understand what's happening there is you're simply removing water to take two smaller molecules and forming one larger one. So <clears throat> the actual disaccharide you end up with will depend on which monosaccharides you actually are uh, using as reactants. So in this case, if you combine glucose and fructose, both monosaccharides, in a dehydration synthesis or condensation reaction, you're going to form this disaccharide, good old sucrose, which we should probably call nasty toxic sucrose, and always, always, always in a dehydration synthesis reaction, you're going to get water as a product as well. So dehydration, you're forming water. Um, if, on the other hand, you're forming corn sugar, corn sugar maltose is another disaccharide formed from the dehydration synthesis of two glucose units. What that looks like in actual structural diagrams is something like this, where you've got glucose 1 plus glucose 2. Those two are going to lose the OH and the H to form water, and they're going to form the disaccharide maltose. By the way, there is mounting evidence that good old table sugar is actually probably not as good for us as some of us think, or at least judging by how much sugar most of us eat, um, we're uh, probably oblivious to a lot of the potential harm that's taking place. So some of us are, it's even suggested, are addicted to the substance. And there are people out there, a, a Robert Lustig, for example, has an awful lot of interesting uh, research to point out just how sugar may in fact be a, a major factor or at least a contributor to a whole lot of nasty things in terms of disease like obesity, uh, diabetes, etc. So if you're up to a challenge, I would challenge you to even attempt to go a week without sugar in your diet. Good luck even finding processed food that isn't containing an awful lot of sugar. So you might notice a whole lot of uh, change in just how you feel after that week, but it's very hard to even find it. So the next part of that objective is to recognize polysaccharides. Poly, simply of course, means many. And what we're talking about here is many simple sugars, glucose, all stuck together, bonded together to form long chain carbohydrates. The polysaccharides you need to know basically include starch and cellulose and glycogen. Starch, you can see here, you can see the monomers that make it up. So if you take these monomers like glucose and you attach them together into a long chain, you're going to have a molecule of starch. Moving on to the next objective, which actually sounds very similar to the last one, differentiate among starch, cellulose, and glycogen. So these, of course, are three polysaccharides. You do need to be able to recognize the difference between those three. All of these polysaccharides essentially are polymers of glucose monomers. So that's not a bad thing to write down here. Polymers of glucose. The difference between the molecules themselves of starch, cellulose, and glycogen are simply in the arrangement of those glucose molecules. The question is, are they in a straight chain? Are they branched molecules? Let's get it right here. So the arrangement of glucose. Um, so of the three that you need to know, only cellulose is non-branching. So you'll actually have a straight chain of glucose molecules. So that one is actually easy to identify. The two you will not be able to really distinguish are starch and glycogen because both of them are branching. Um, starch 
is found only in plant cells uh, until you eat the plant, of course. And uh, let's just say that it is, in fact, a branching structure of glucose monomers joined together. And at the same time, glycogen also is branching, and it's only found in animal cells. So I, besides starch here, I'm just going to write plants. And beside glycogen, storage form of carbohydrates in animal cells. And they're going to learn how to actually print with one of these. So, as I said, uh, cellulose, and this is a, simply a diagram showing multiple fibers of cellulose. It's made up made up of a long chain or polymers of glucose. In our everyday life, we actually eat cellulose, so we call it dietary fiber. Your mother has probably said you got to make sure you get your fiber in your breakfast cereal. So, fiber. Um, fiber is something that we can't actually digest. We're not cows and uh, that, believe it or not, is actually a good thing and the reasons why it might be a good thing we can look at further when we get into the digestion unit. But dietary fiber is good. Of course, as far as the plant is concerned, it's not really producing uh, cellulose for your benefit. It could care less. Uh, the plant is using cellulose to actually make up these cell walls and those cell walls, of course, unlike animal cells, um, prevent uh, the expansion of the uh, cell. Some of this is actually starting to probably sound a little redundant to you, but like a lot of the uh, course content, uh, brainwashing really isn't something that uh, is below me. I'm quite happy to use it, so you're going to hear it over and over again, and hopefully it eventually sinks in. But um, I think we've already mentioned that starch is a polysaccharide that is a storage form of uh, glucose in plant cells. Storage form of glucose in plants. So. It's different forms of starch and different combinations of starch. Um, the plant produces the starch actually as a food source for itself. Then we do the nasty thing and we actually harvest the plant and eat it for our benefit. But the starch is stored in the chloroplast, the actual little machines that are carrying out photosynthesis. And they are simply long chains of glucose. And unlike cellulose, these chains are branched. You can see the branching. The point is, in terms of use, starch can be uh, readily converted. Converted. This isn't a spiritual thing here, but chemically converted back into glucose, depending on how much energy and how rapid you need that energy. Uh, for most people, starches are actually a major part of our diets. It's the last time you had potatoes. Potatoes are mainly starch. Most of our grains are starch. Corn, starch. Some of us prefer rice. All of these are essentially sources of starch in, a, in the human diet. Similarly, gly glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates in animal cells. So we see here some liver cells, mitochondrion, these granules are actually made up of glycogen and this would be a way that the animal cell can store uh, an energy reserve should you ever need uh, to break it back down into glucose. So glycogen is actually used as a secondary energy reserve. I think I'll write that down here. Secondary energy reserve. Because the primary energy reserve would actually be fats. Failing that, say you're running a marathon, uh, what you're going to do is break down that glycogen back into glucose, enters the bloodstream, and now you can increase energy as needed. So the other important point here again is to just emphasize that glycogen is the storage form in animal cells, not plants. And animal cells, I can spell animal. Yeah, so in particular, the liver, and probably to some degree in the muscles as well.
And finally, this is just a uh, tabular summary of the information that was in this presentation. Three carbohydrates, essentially in three groups, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. And then the examples of each monosaccharides include glucose, fructose, and galactose. Disaccharides include maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Lactose, by the way, is simply milk sugar. Some of you are lacking that in your diet and uh, you can't eat dairy because of it. And then polysaccharides would include the three we've just been looking at, the starch, glycogen, and cellulose. If you don't like the table, another option, carbohydrates, just showing you that their sugars are mono, di, and poly, and then again, the examples. So stay tuned for Bobby Talks on three. We're going to move on to the last, hopefully, of those biochemistry objectives.